Okay. Let's start. Um, so for those people who have been very familiar with Overmark, who have been following Overmark since last year, I think we started last year, Daryl started it last year, uh, we are a team of tutor who were very recently also students, um, some may still be students, some uh, are working already, so what we do is that we hope to build a student-centric platform that can empower you all and then help you guys in your studies in a way that, you know, it, it works for us. So there's A level team and there's uh, O level team and there's A level team. Okay, so a bit about myself. I'm Sing Wei. I'm the O level bio tutor in Overmark. So I took my O level in TKGS and then I went to RI to, for A level. Then I went on to NUS to study life sciences and psychology. And I have been teaching since I ended my A level. So that has been six years, quite long. Uh, these six years, the start of my tutoring, I teach quite a lot of subjects, but slowly, slowly, I specialize in bio. And for the past few years, I've been only teaching bio. Yeah, and I teach both private and group tuitions. Okay. So today, uh, 1.5 hours, not very long. We will try to uh, go through like one and two. And then after going through this specific paper, we will talk a little bit about the strategy uh, working towards the actual level and then of course the removal of CLT and what does it mean for us and hopefully we have some time for Q&A okay okay let's start so let me okay paper one so let me read through the chat five six seven ten okay I'll just try to see it if I missed out, just let me know. Okay, question five. Did anyone say question five? Yeah. No, question three. So it's after question three. Okay. So question three, a student created this setup and they forgot all about it and left the setup overnight. Um, this setup, it shows that it shows a um, potato tuber. And there is two CM two two uh more two more glucose solution and then distilled water at the bottom, right? So here, the water potential is very high here. The water potential is low here. And what happens to this after twelve hours? So because it has twelve hours, in general, it would move. Water will move from a, like what you know, water will move from a, a region of higher water potential to a region of lower water potential, which means that water will move in this direction. Okay. Um, so in this case, the water will move through from a distilled water to the glucose solution, right? So for this potato tuber, it is just like an agent of transfer of water. So um, the answer is C. You have a uniform turgidity. Question five. Okay, so question five should be quite straightforward. Huh? In this case, this is an enzyme and it changed shape. So what would cause an enzyme to change shape? It is denaturation, and in this case, the denaturation um, is caused by temperature change or pH change. So in this case, it's C. Question six also have. Okay, for question six, a student... Okay, so this is a very common question um, in prelim paper, and I think it has been tested in O-level before. So there's four types of biological molecule, water, carbohydrate, proteins, and fats. And then imagine like you have 100 grams of each and then you burn it, okay? Combustion means burning. And then you measure the temperature change of water. So when you burn something, the, there's flame. So of course the temperature will increase, right? So when the temperature increase, what does it mean? This is a transfer of energy. It's an indication of energy. So it means that which food, uh, which biological molecule here, has the highest amount of energy. 
So in this case, it is in your biological molecule chapter, it's your fats. Fats has the highest amount of energy with, uh, among these this, uh, four biological molecules. Water is no energy inside. So you burn water, you burn water, you're just boiling the water. Carbohydrate and protein is four calories and fats is nine. So fats has a higher amount of energy in, stored in them. So it create a, a it create, no, it transfer a larger heat energy. So therefore the temperature increase higher. Question seven. Okay, question seven is kind of a tricky answer. What a tricky question. What is the enzyme that controls a reaction in which both the enzyme and substrate can denature a high temperature? So this question may sound tricky, may sound weird, but it's actually pretty simple once you get like what denatures. So you ask yourself what denatures, not just enzyme denature. So what you know is the enzyme denatures, but why is why would enzyme denature? Because enzyme is a protein. So in this case, what react, which enzyme controls the reaction such that the enzyme and the substrate itself, which is protein, will both, be, will both denature? It would be your protease because protease digests protein. Okay. Okay, so question eight. Uh, oh, there's so many questions. Okay, wait. Question eight. Uh, lipase catalyzes the conversion of fats. Okay, so this kind of question, right? When you see this kind of question, just take a take a breather because it's a long question, but you need to hit every single... Uh, you need to read every single line. Okay, very important because you don't know where exactly the key thing lies in. Okay? Uh, lipase digest catalyze the conversion from fats into fatty acid okay it's shown here three different enzyme inhibitor okay inhibitor um, inhibitor means something that stops the reaction some things that prevents the reaction from happening okay so if you don't know if ever say that, like something inhibits something it means that A inhibits the reaction from happening it means that it stops it prevents it slows down the reaction okay so an enzyme inhibitor of lipase XYZ so this XYZ are the inhibitor. So here it explains to prevent the above reaction from occurring. And the percentage inhibition of lipase was measured uh, at different concentration of inhibitors. So you have to understand this graph first. Okay, This graph is that when the inhibitor concentration increases, sorry, the x-axis increase, what would happen to the percentage inhibition? So in this case, you have to establish, you have to understand this graph first. When it is higher, what does it mean? So in this case, uh, when it becomes higher, means that the higher percentage inhibition, right? Means that it inhibits more. So it is stopping, preventing the reaction more. So in this case, inhibitor X is kind of like the strongest inhibitor. Like number one, uh, strongest inhibitor, right? Because when, it, when the inhibitor concentration increases, the percentage inhibition also increases. Okay, so let's look at uh, the three points that are given here. The higher the concentration of inhibitor X, the lesser the amount of fat is broken down. So this is correct because as the higher the concentration of inhibitor X, the percentage inhibition increase, which means that more fats are being digested. Uh, more less fats are being digested, right? So uh, this is correct. Part two, the production of fatty acid and glycerol using inhibitor Y is higher than when inhibitor Z is used. So the production of fatty acid and glycerol, what are they? They are your product. Product um, formed using inhibitor Y versus inhibitor Z. Because inhibitor Y has a higher inhibition, higher percentage inhibition, the production cannot be higher. Right? So this is wrong. And the third one, the production of fatty acid and glycerol, at an inhibit inhibitor concentration of two, so this part, uh, is lower than an inhibitor concentration of four. Cannot be la, right? Four is four already increased already. More con if it's, there's more inhibitor, they will inhibit more of the reaction. So in this case, question eight is eight. So just the first one. It's kind of like about reading graph. Um, yeah. Question 10. Question 10. Okay. 
question 10. Oh, okay. Question 10 is asking for when the plant was placed in a glass jar containing radioactive carbon dioxide and then exposed to sunlight. What would the order, uh, what in which order would radioactivity be detected in the leaf? So ask yourself, what is carbon dioxide used for, for this um, plant? So of course, when you think of carbon dioxide, you think of photosynthesis. Okay, so um, when it is about photosynthesis, where does carbon dioxide enter the leaf, right? So you have to start linking uh, where's the carbon dioxide, uh, sorry, where does the carbon dioxide enter the leaf? So it starts from atmospheric air, so CO2, right? This is your radioactive carbon dioxide. Then it will enter here, and then it would enter all the cells that contain chloroplast, right? Because CO2 is used for photosynthesis and chloroplast is needed for photosynthesis. So first one confirm will be this because that is where it enters. And then it would be the cells that contain chloroplast. And in this case, one is out because one is your cuticle doesn't contain chloroplast. Two palisade mesophyll cells so it is 5, 2. After that, where would it go? After um, photosynthesis is done, the, uh, the glucose is formed, it will be transported to other parts of the leaf, other parts of the plants. So it will go through your film. So in these three and four, which one is film? So I always tell my students, just remember XP. XP sounds better than PX, right? So the four is the film. So it's 5, 2, 4. Okay, so this one you need to think of like your photosynthesis. Then after that, the product of photosynthesis being transported to some other plants. Twelve. Okay, in patients with cystic fibros uh, fibrosis, thick mucus block the pancreatic duct. So you need to know what is pancreatic duct. Huh? What does pa what, what is pancreatic duct used for? Pancreatic duct is used for um, releasing whatever pancreas produce into the small intestine. Okay, so this is the first part you need to recognize that. What is the possible effect of this blockage? So let's say your pancreatic duct is being blocked. What will happen? So when pancreatic duct is blocked, firstly, what are the enzymes secreted by pancreas that needs to be secret or uh, need to be released into the small intestine? Okay, so it's your TAL. Trypsin amylase lipase. So when it is blocked, means that this enzyme cannot um, enter the small intestine. So this enzyme cannot actually digest the food. Lipase fats. So therefore, the fats cannot be the fats cannot be digested. It will be ingested out, which means that it will be um, removed from the body without being digesting and then absorbing. Weight loss. Yes. Why? A weight loss and malnourishment, both. Because if there's no digestion, there's no absorption. So you don't get your nutrient. So if you don't get your nutrient, uh, then the person will suffer from weight loss and malnourishment. Okay. So the answer is B. Okay. Someone asked about question 11. Removal of pancreas would not be an expected, not be an expected consequences of removal of pancreas. So same thing, you have to think of what does the pancreas do. So where, um, in what part, you know, you learn about pancreas, right? Firstly, I think this part, uh, this, this, and this, it should be quite clear why it would have, uh, it would have happened because pancreas. Your islet of Langerhans is in pancreas. So if your pancreas is being removed, then the islet of Langerhans cannot secrete your insulin and glucagon, right? So for 11, why is the answer not E, not A? Because islet of Langerhans is in pancreas and islet of Langerhans secrete your insulin and glucagon. Okay, so A and D is about the hormones part. And then C, uh, just how we talked about already is the TAL, the enzyme that's being secreted by pancreas. Why is it not B? B, it won't happen 
because pancreatic juice, pancreatic juice is alkaline. Pancreatic, pancreatic juice, intestinal juice and bowel, they are all alkaline. So if you remove pancreas, there is no pancreatic juice, means that there is less alkaline juice to neutralize the pH. So in fact, the pH will be lower. Okay. All right. Small intestine. Yeah. So that's a very good question. Small intestine um, secrete intestinal juice that contains lipase as well. So why would the stool still be oily? So imagine like usually you need like both pancreatic lipase and intestinal lipase to, to digest, your, uh, digest your fats. But in this case, half of it is gone. Fifty percent is gone. Um, another fifty percent is not sufficient. So think of like baseline, right? Baseline, you need both enzymes. So in this case, uh, don't uh, removing one would cause the stool to be oily. Okay, can't spend too much time here. Question fourteen. A lot of people ask for this. Um. I think this question is also a very complicated question. So let's just go through each part together. So the photomicrograph shows an aphid feeding on the branch of a, a woody tree. Every time you see an aphid, you know that it has to be film. The fluid extracted consists of sieve element set. The high turgor pressure in the sieve element forces the cell content through the food canal of the aphid. So high. So during exam, right, do the same thing as me, right? Like when we are reading through the question, we also don't know what is the key thing. But you know, when you when you see that, mm, I think this is probably important. I will just like underline. It. Don't bother using a uh, highlighter or anything. Just use your pen or pencil. Just like highlight the important thing so that you don't um you don't miss it out, right? Forces the cell content. Uh, so once every thirty minutes, a droplets of undigested sap. So here, your undigested sap exits the effluent. Plants ex um, exhibiting extensive aphid damage can display a variety of symptoms such as decreased growth rate, stunted growth, low yields, and that. Okay, so in this case, they are asking what, which pair of observation and explanation is correct. So we need to establish what exactly is happening here first. So we know that aphid will fit on the film, right? It also talk about the sieve element set. Um, the high turgor pressure forces the sieve element. The high turgor pressure forces um, the cell content through the food canal of the aphid, which means that in this case, C is wrong. Because this undigested sap, right, purely is by forcing it out. So imagine a tube, and because the pressure is very high, it just comes out. So that is what is happening here. So C is not correct. This question is challenging because it requires you to like read that paragraph. It's like your a bit like your English comprehension like that. Um, and then high turgor pressure in sieve element B is also wrong because what happened for high turgor pressure in sieve element is that it just forced it out, right? So it doesn't require this like mitochondria to carry out this active transport. Okay, so this variety of symptoms. due to low level of manufactured food substances left for tilia plant. It is also um, oh did I write B? Oh, okay, sorry. Um I think this this uh, typo on typo in my uh my answer. I need to correct it. Sorry about this. Um, the answer here is actually um D. Because the these these plants that have all these things, the if it will fit, that will uh, basically remove all the like manufactured food substances. So that's why the plant would sh show all these things. Okay, so B is not correct because the turgor pressure is it is A right. Mm, so the sieve element that it is, um, which is okay. Why A is not correct is because it is not exactly a observation explanation. It is correct in the sense that what is in your film is sucrose and amino acid, but it is not an observation and explanation. Can, get what I mean? 
Yeah. So the answer is D. I would re-upload the answer. I will change my question 14. Let me write it down. Okay. Sorry if I scare you guys. If you guys write D and then it was wrong. So the observation is that it says that plants exhibiting extensive aphid damage, which means that the plants have a lot of aphid feeding on it. It is feeding on the film, what's in the film. So it doesn't have, it's the, the aphid is like basically taking the plant's food, right? Your sucrose, your amino acids. So therefore, um, it shows all these things. Like the plants would show a decreased growth rate, standard growth, low yield and death. It's because the it. Yes. Yes, A is wrong. A is not an explanation. It's not an observation and explanation. Yeah. Okay. Um, 17. Okay. Don't have. <laughs> um, don't have because what you need to know is just like, okay. Okay, write it down, everyone. Your red blood cell is your antigen, okay? So let's say you are blood group A. This is how your red blood cell looks like, okay? And then your plasma would have um, all the anti-A anti -A antibody, which is like basically B. La. So in this case, uh, the donor, you look at the antigen, uh, the anti on the red blood cell. Okay, so this is for those who have my created notes, I mentioned this tip, right? So every time you look at this, right, donor look at the uh, red blood cell, the antigen on the red blood cell, and then recipient look at the antibodies in the plasma. So that is, I think, the best way for you to remember this. So just remember donor, red blood cell, recipient, plasma, okay? So in this question, um, a question 18, oh, I don't have, I want to, what time do we start? Eight. Okay, let's move on faster a bit. Um, in question 18, uh, I think XY is quite obvious, right? XY it is um, when we are forming the, this direction, the reaction X, it is at the lungs. And then when we are, sorry, the respiring um, tissue, and then when we are at uh, reaction Y, it is at the lung because we want to form CO2 to expel it. Okay, so here is definitely either A or C because X has to be at the respiring tissue because we want to uh, transport the CO2. And then reaction Y is because we want to form the CO2 back so that we can expel it. So here, rather, uh, the tricky part is about, is it about acid-base uh, acid balance or CO2-O2 balance? Uh, and in this case, it is the uh, CO2 O2 balance. It's about CO2, ma, right? This case is about forming the CO2. Thirty-three. Okay, they do thirty-three. Okay, so question 28. Insulin is injected into a diabetic patient rather than taken orally. So ask you all one question. Why is insulin? Why is insulin? Insulin, you tell me insulin is hormone. Okay, that one, okay. What is hormone made up of? Hormone is a chemical substance. It's also a protein. Okay, so why uh, usually diabetic patients, especially those that inject, which means it's your um, type one diabetes patient, they don't they don't eat oral di they don't eat oral insulin. They inject directly into their abdomen because protein will be digested. Yes, so it's it. Please tell me if my answer is like different from what because you know sometimes human make mistake. Um, twenty twenty one. Mm, okay, twenty twenty one. Um, they, this question asking for how is section P what is the section P um, 
adapted to carry out its function. Section P, what is, what is section B doing? Section B is basically your uh, proximal convoluted tubule, right? And proximal convoluted, convoluted tubule does selective reabsorption. So this one is wrong. Um, yeah, answer is B. So uh, because it wouldn't, it's not just about passive transport only, and it cannot have few layer thick. Remember the one cell thick idea? It has to be one cell thick so that diffusion is fast. 21. Okay, so in a dry environment, what does dry environment mean? Dry environment means that we need more water. Longer loop of Henle, more uh, selective reabsorption of water. More sebaceous gland, uh, release oil to prevent loss of water. Uh, longer large intestine, reabsorb water as well. But larger glomerulus, what will happen when there is a larger glomerulus? There will be more um, filtrate, glomerular filtrate going into the glomerulus, right? So A, it is, does not help. Someone asked question 16, why is option 4 correct? Okay, uh, which one of the following will be the consequences of a leaky bicuspid valve? Okay, so when there is a leaky bicuspid valve, it means that the, where is bicuspid valve? This one. Okay, this is your left side. If there's a leaky bicuspid valve, which means that blood would flow back to the atrium. And if blood flow back to the atrium, it means that um, less blood is being transported through the aorta to other parts of the body. So in this sense, it is getting less oxygen, less oxygen um, to your body. That's why option four is correct. Twenty-eight. Twenty-eight. We talked about it already. Okay, um, 33 and 34 is both our uh, uh, cell division um, chapter. The diagram show four different stages of a cell, a type of cell division. What is this type of cell division first? Is this mitosis or meiosis? This is the first thing you have to answer, like you have to uh, establish in this question. So in this case, how could you tell what it is? It is mitosis. Why? Because there is no pairing of homologous chromosome in like the first stage. Okay, there is no uh, pairing. Of, so it's mitosis. So after establishing that, uh, where in which structure will it occur the slowest? So in what kind of cells that, that do we need active mitosis? Do we need uh, active cell division? Enter set, yes. Bone marrow, yes. Root cap, yes. Except for mature cell, you won't actively um, divide because you don't have to grow anymore. It's like when you are young, there's a lot of mitosis going on so that you can grow taller. But now, when you are like more like, okay, you guys still can grow, but I cannot. Then mitosis stop ready, okay? Um, let me continue 34 first. Then I will go back to 31 and 32. So 34, the diagram represents the nucleus of a cell in the late prophase of meiosis. Um, and they never mentioned with prophase, right? But you can tell because they say that uh, 2n equals to 4, which means that there is 4 chromosomes in a normal number, normal cell. So this is a prophase 1 because there is 4 chromosomes. And then what happened at anaphase 2? So it means it's like towards the end really, right? So firstly, what will happen is that they will pair up, right? The uh, this this will pair up. This will pair up. Okay. Uh, don't have time to draw out, but I just quickly. Uh, firstly, this these two will pair up. Then it will separate. So what does it mean? It means that it will separate like this. Okay. So this is the first stage of meiosis. This is how it will separate. 
And then after they separate like that, so which means that one cell, the end of um the end of the first stage of meiosis, this is what we will get. Okay, then after that, how will it split? It will split. No, okay, like that. This is a this is a more accurate one. Okay, so this is the end of the this cell. Uh, this cell is the end of meiosis one. And then end of meiosis two at the end of phase when it split up. Okay, it, yeah, it will split like this. So how is it? It will be C. 31, 32, 31. What is this photomicrograph showing? Fertilization. Sorry, my handwriting ugly, but fertilization. And then it shows this uterine lining of a woman. Okay, so when you talk about fertilization, when will fertilization happen? It equals to your, okay, if you know, just own self answer yourself, okay? It's fertile period, right? Fertile period is basically uh, where fertilization will occur. That's why it's called fertile period. Okay, so now this is the calendar. The thickness of the uterine lining, right, here, right, drop. So what does this mean? This is your day one to five, four. Lah. Yeah, day zero to four, which is, is the menstruation period. So you can, uh, from here, 8 June, is your day one. Then from there, when is your fertile period? Day 11 to day 17. Um, so it is, you just add day 11, so it should be, oh, so it, 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 it's, a, it's a period, la, right? You did add 11, it's about 19 June to 25 June. So you only choose one date, right? So it's C. Okay, 32. Which comparison between cell P and cell Q? Okay, so this is, you have to refer to the diagram, right? The cell P is our... Cell P should be the... Cell P should be the sperm and cell Q should be the egg, right? Like the picture. But in general, uh, which one of these is correct? Cell P and Q can under meiotic cell division. This is wrong. It's a bit tricky, the grammar, because cell P and Q, they are product of meiotic cell division. They cannot undergo meiotic cell division anymore, right? They are already half the number of chromosomes. They cannot further undergo, so A is wrong. Cell P has the higher concentration of mitochondria than cell Q. So cell P is the sperm. It has a higher concentration of mitochondria. So we, we pen this one, okay, pending. Cell P has a smaller number of chromosomes than cell Q. This is wrong because they both have half the number of a normal cell. So it cannot have smaller number. Cell P and Q may contain either X and Y chromosome. Your egg contains X chromosome. Your sperm can contain either X or Y. So this is also wrong. So why cell P, why does sperm have a higher concentration of mitochondria than egg? So this one is in your middle part of the sperm. It has a lot of mitochondria to carry out aerobic respiration, to release energy so that the sperm can swim towards the egg. Okay. All right. That is, I think, about all the MCQ questions. Why is the answer not C? Um, they have the same number of chromosomes, 31. 31 is C. Do I type wrongly? The 31 is C, right? 31 is C. Yeah. Okay. Let's go to the section B. Should that fertilization take place where the UL is the thickest? Fertilization is fertile period. It doesn't, it is that it has doesn't have nothing to do with no, not that nothing to do, but it has to do with the availability of ovum and sperm. Right. So that they can that, that's why fertilization can, can happen. So it's not uh, about the uterine lining. Question 30. So for question 30, uh, it's, uh, it's asking which one will produce the most number of C. Oh, C. 
how do you produce seeds? Fertilization. Right, in plants, fertilization. Your ovule becomes seeds, your ovary becomes fruits. So in this case, the first thing is that the stigma cannot be removed because the stigma is where it receives pollen grain. So C and D is definitely wrong. And then, oh, sorry, read the question again. Huh? It is insect pollinated flowers. Okay. So if it's insect pollinated flower, it means that the petal is also very important. If not, the insect wouldn't be attracted to come here to transfer the pollen grain. So petal being left is very important. Sigma need to be left, cannot be removed. Enter, it doesn't matter because it's cross-pollination. We are getting uh, pollens from another flower. Okay, we need to move on. Uh, other questions, we will like talk about it later. Okay. Um, okay, yeah, let's go through this part. I am going to, I think the most number is towards the end, uh, eight, nine. Oh, question three, question three also a lot, three, eight, nine, okay. Okay, so you see this question, uh, I think a lot of answers are very straightforward, so I, 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 I probably will skip question one, because question one is about labeling, and then... It's a plant cell, don't have chloroplasts. Yeah, so I think the answer is really straightforward. So uh, if there's anything you can... Yeah, can. As long as you have the vacuum there. Uh, question two as well. Question two is about... Okay, question two is a data question. So maybe let's talk a little bit about this. Um, it asks to describe the general trend shown in figure 2.2. And this is the figure 2.2. Uh, because they are asking for general trend, um, it... You just have, there is four graph here, right? You don't have to go into all four graph, just a very generic one. As you can see, there's one general trend here. There is really a one general trend across four graph. Is that it will increase, then it will plateau. Okay, so this is what you will talk about. Carbon dioxide concentration increase, then the rate of carbon dioxide uptake would increase. And then at some point, it would, it doesn't increase anymore. And then, um, B, with reference to the graph, okay, there's a specific graph here, pun X and 25 degree, explain the term limiting factor. Okay, so limiting factor is something, it is a very, it's something that you, you learn, right? This question is a bit special because it asks for with reference to a certain graph, but you do um, anything, uh, any data is fine, quote data from any graph. Um, as I mentioned here. Okay, um, and then, okay, back to question B. So limiting factor is something that you, you guys learn and you should know the uh, definition, right? So limiting factor is a factor that when it increase, it will directly affect a reaction. It will direct, so when something increase, uh, the rate of reaction increase. So in this case, um, when you want to explain plants X at 25 degrees here. So limiting factor is, again, uh, stress back. Uh, the rate or limiting factor is basically a factor when it increase, the rate of reaction will increase. So at what point is carbon dioxide a limiting factor on this graph? It is here, right? Because only when, when it increase, the rate will increase. But at what point is it not a limiting factor? It's here. And when it is when carbon dioxide is not a limiting factor, something else has to be the, be the limiting factor. So it's also something you mentioned because there are only three limiting factors. You only need to know three limiting factors for photosynthesis, right? Which is your carbon dioxide concentration, light intensity, and temperature. So in this case, if it's not carbon dioxide, it has to be only either light or temperature. Okay, so the real thing part uh, is in the notes. This part, question, oh, question three, right. Question three is the one that quite a lot of people has issue with. I'm going to close the chat. Okay, so our equation is fine. Account for the difference in the rates of oxygen consumption in lizard A when it's at rest and it's running. So which means that at running, as you can see here, it 
consume a lot more oxygen. Why is it so? Uh, this is pretty obvious, right? Because it needs more energy when you run. So uh, you need more. Uh, why do you need more energy? Uh, if you need more energy, why do you need more oxygen? So you just have to link that part up, which is that um, it represents the rate of respiration as required for respiration. Um, and then part three is also actually limiting factor. No, limiting factor is the factor that affects it. So when it increases, um, okay, never mind. I'll address this kind all this all this personal question, right? Let's bring it to the end. Okay. If it's like a short explanation, then you can put it in. If not, I will just be at the QA. Okay. Um, how is an oxygen debt form? And then how is the oxygen debt paid back? This is this this all these questions, right? They are kind of in the notes. Uh, they are all like just kind of respiration content. Just have to like put it in. So in this case, um, how is it formed? Is because anaerobic respiration, it will cause a build up in lactic acid, right? And then how is it paid back? Is being removed, transported back to the liver. Yeah, so all these are in the notes. Just, just make sure you have it. Um, you kind of need to memorize it. And that chunk is quite a big chunk. I, I admit that that chunk is quite big. Um, so just require memorization in this part. Okay. Mm, the lung is adapted for its role one. Uh, this is also pretty straightforward. Every time... Let, 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 let me tell you this. Anytime you see an adaptation, right? Just make sure you memorize everything. Because adaptation is a very easy question to ask um, for bio. Adaptation to its function. A lot, of, a lot of chapters have that kind of thing. So this as well, lung. And it's the basic stuff. Surface area to volume ratio. Uh, one cell thick. Richly supplied with blood capillaries. Maintain the concentration gradient. So this is a very... This, these three points are very basic points about when it involves diffusion. So when do you see this? Also in the adaptation for small intestine for absorption of food. Okay. So remember it one time, you can answer two times. Uh, you can answer for two, two, two points. Uh, of course, there's this special one about thin film of moisture. So it allows oxygen to dissolve in it before entering blood vessel. Don't tell me carbon dioxide. Huh? Some people just say carbon dioxide because they mix up the plants part. Because plant also got thin film of moisture, it's for carbon dioxide to dissolve before entering mesophyll cells. But in this case, we want the oxygen, the carbon dioxide is being removed, right? So it's for oxygen. So just make sure um, this kind of small, small mistake cannot make one, it will cost you all the mark. The same experiment is conducted on human. Okay, so this is the kind of question that I'll call it like the application question. Um, because it is not very obvious in your notes. Even like my curated notes, I also don't I also don't write this kind of thing, right? Because it is not supposed to be like the basic of basic, like your learning outcome stuff. But you're asking for uh if on human, how would you expect the effect of temperature on the oxygen consumption to be different in human during running? So here there's a temperature, right? And in this case, when temperature increases the oxygen consumption also increased, right? This is for this is for lizard. How about for human? For human, one the first thing we want to we need to establish is that respiration photosynthesis. These two two things that you learn. They are both controlled by enzymes. Um, you don't need to know the detail, right? You don't need to know what enzymes. In fact, there are many, many enzymes involved in this. Okay, so you don't need to know, but just need, but you do. I do want you to know. Um, it's an enzyme control reaction. So for lizard, the temperature increase, the rate of respiration can keep increasing. That is what is shown here, right? Oxygen consumption represents uh the rate of respiration. But in human, it wouldn't because our optimum body temperature is 37. 
So at some point, the rate of respiration, this enzyme will be denatured. So the rate of respiration would decrease. It is your, this graph. Okay. Yeah. So this is kind of like an application question, uh, but it's only two marks. Uh, O-level may not have so, so many of this kind. Lah. Define expression, copy from the notes, labeling, copy from the notes. Okay. Press this. Part C, this part C is a, uh, quite a long uh, question, right? It said that Amy went to Bukitima Hill on a Sunday noon time. I don't understand why people want to hide at such a hot time, but okay, very hot. She forgot to bring her water bottle, so she didn't drink much water. So from here, right, you need to start like, think, think a bit like uh, when you read the question, right? You need to start like linking like, oh, why is this, why is this trying to him? Um, so with reference to figure 4.1 excretion, right? Figure 4.1 is your is your nephron. And your knowledge about homeostasis, describe the events her body would react to the situation. So in this case, first thing that's a hot factor, and another one is that they she didn't drink water. So these two is two events that you should be able to recognize. So once you recognize these two things. You also need to recognize that you need to address both parts, right? When it's very hot, it is about like all the skin changes, like all your um, thermoreceptor, vasodilation. Oh, this is sweat glands, um, metabolic rate, all these things. Okay, so this is addressing the hot part. Okay, and then drinking very little water, but you also have to address which is that uh, more ADH, more permeable, like all the uh, kidney tubules and collecting that more permeable, so more water to be reabsorbed. Okay, so this is the two parts, and if you only manage to identify one, then you get half of them. So hopefully you did identify both. Human body go through homeostasis. Yep, so that idea is correct, but the events her body go through, who react. So you actually need to talk about the process of homeostasis. Okay, so all these things. Uh, so I think the challenging part in this, right? So my iPad is lagging. Um, it is kind of like reading the question. I feel like the answer part, right, in this paper is not too difficult. It's all in your notes. Uh, but it's more like reading the question and reading what the question wants. Why is there a line there? Never mind. Question X. Uh, X is um. What is it? Say? Uh, label the effector of pupil reflex as X. X, which is uh, pupil reflex is your iris, and then defining reflex section uh is also in your notes. So I won't go into it. This is a more interesting question, which is that it's recommended that students should not read too close to books or look too close to screen for a long period of time. So just why is that so? So sometimes you also feel that, right? Like when you read, you study for too long, right? Your book is just like, right, um, like super close to you. You'll feel super tired. Why is that so? So actually, you know, it's, in, uh, it's what you learn. Is that when you look at something close, the ciliary muscle have to contract because that causes suspensory ligament to relax. So suspensory ligament slacken, slacken, relaxing the pool of lens. So lens become thicker so that it could like refract the light more. So it bend the light ray more to focus sharply on objects that's very close to us. Okay, so all this is in your notes. Totally fine. But the compulsory point here is that, so why, but you have to answer to the question, right? The question didn't ask you to explain how to focus on something that is close. The question asks you, why is it that you will feel tired? It's because the ciliary muscle, when you keep looking at something that's so close, the ciliary muscle will always be contracting. So that's why it's so tight. Okay. So that's the compulsory mark. So even you can hit like the first three marks, but then you have to get the last compulsory mark. Question six. The table shows the number of chromosome and the mass of DNA in different nuclei from the same animal. So very important. It's the same animal. Same animal, but it's at a different stage of their cell. So prophase of mitosis, right? It 
is showing uh, it has 34 chromosome and 80 uh, US, uh, DNA. So let's look at chromosome first. If it has 34 at prophase of mitosis, it means that this is a normal number. Okay, telophase of mitosis. It's a bit tricky here. Telophase is when it haven't split yet. Splitting up is cytokinesis. So it also has 34 chromosomes. But if it is a sperm cell, it has to be 17. Why? Because 17 um, is half the number of chromosomes. Sperm cell is your gummy, right? So half the number of chromosomes. Okay, now we're talking about DN. Sorry, someone joined. Now we talk about DNA. Okay, so DNA is where when we talk about DNA, so right down here, uh, number of chromosome, you look at the send, um, so when, let's say, okay, so this is, let's say this is the example here, right? How many chromosome? This is two chromosome. But the amount of DNA you look at the chromatids, which means like this part. So here, there is two chromosomes, but there is four DNA. Why is people joining at 56? Okay, so uh, two, two chromosomes and then four DNA, because you are looking at this part. Okay? So this is a tip for you guys. DNA, you look at this center part. So this is one DNA. Uh, sorry, this is one chromosome. This is also one chromosome. Okay? But this is one DNA. This is two DNA. Okay? This is a tip for you guys so that your, for your, if ever the question come out about number or, number of DNA or number of uh, chromosome, um, you can just draw it out to guess, to, to answer, not guess, educated answer. Okay, so for the DNA, the prophase, let's say the prophase has like 80 DNA, right? So prophase is like, like this. This is mitosis. Uh. So by the time it's in telophase, they would have separated, right? Because uh, they were line at the metaphase plate and then separate. So by the time it reached telophase, right, it's already like this. And then sperm cell, it would even further half it. So that's why it's 80, 40, 20. Okay, so uh, I know exam may not have the time, but let's say if you really cannot um, understand cell division, especially when it comes to question like has to do with like the number of chromosomes, number of DNA, just skip that question. When you have time, come back to that question, draw it out. So practice when you, uh, I'm sure that when you are trying to understand, you should be able to like draw, like follow the sequence of how the cell um, changes, right? So when you draw it out, then maybe you can understand, like then you can see the number of changes because just follow what I say. One centromere, is one chromosome, one chromatid is one DNA. Okay, so if really you cannot skip, then have time, come back, draw, then start count. Okay. Um oh, this question doesn't have the answer. Um so for this, um the cell shows. Uh, three pairs of chromosome at early stage of prophase one. And what would happen at telophase two? So this is kind of like the MCQ question just now. Prophase one is the very early stage. So what would happen is that it would split up, right? It would it would pair up first. Um, the homologous chromosome will pair up. And then um, it would split. So let's say Let's not draw, la. I just draw A, A, B, B, C, C. So this is the pairing up first. Then it was split up like that, right? 
So one cell get ABC, another cell get ABC. So let's draw the, the middle part. So at the end of it, we will have this cell that is like one that is super long, then one that is black, then when there's a shorter one. Okay, so the end of meiosis one, this is what we will get. Basically half the number of chromosomes. And then uh, meiosis two. Meiosis two is basically the same as mitosis. You can think of it like that. Uh, the number of chromosomes is already half, right? Here got how many? Here got six, but here got three. But the DNA is still double. Remember? Look at the chromatids, right? So here, still got six. One, two, three, four, five. Yes, six DNA. Three chromosomes, six DNA. The final is three chromosome, three DNA. Okay, so this is what a gamete is needed. So it will be just like, and then the black one. Okay. Um, for telophase, the shape of the cell is still like an eight, right? So it's not fully separated yet. So do we count the chromosome or DNA? Mm. Um, so for this question, it is asking for the nucleus. So we can assume that it's just one nucleus of the telophase cell. Yeah. So uh, we would we would we will count the number of, uh, the number of chromosomes is still like that, but DNA is already split up. So we would just count one. Yeah. Describe what happens during prophase one. This is in your this is in your notes, huh? Okay. Um, question seven. Draw best fit line. Yeah, this one best fit line. Just make sure like four points above, four points below. I th um, it will be about like like this. I think. Yeah, and then no ex uh extrapolation. So don't don't like go be don't go beyond. Uh, start from zero zero. Data question, why is drink driving expect, uh, irresponsible? Because uh, by alcohol content increases, your reaction time increases. So it can cause car accident. Um, this question, let's go through this question together, right? Uh, because it, it has um, all, the, all your... Um, I don't know, inheritance. Is it usually challenging? I think some people do find inheritance question a bit challenging. So um, we let's let's go through this together. Okay, so uh polydactyl is a rare condition that causes the development of extra finger. So usually they have like six fingers and it's caused by a dominant allele. And it shows the inheritance in the family. So when you say it's caused by dominant allele, it means that people have normal finger are homozygous recessive. So this one we can draw out first. Normal finger is homozygous recessive. So they're asking for F, right? State the genotype of individual F. Oh, uh, I did. It's used, it used N, okay? Uh, state the genotype of individual F. So you realize that for individual F, right, it can either be um, homozygous, homozygous dominant or heterozygous, right? Because it's the dominant allele, so it can either, yeah, it can be both. And this question, there can only be one answer because it shows you the children. The children, there is normal finger, which means that they are homozygous recessive, small a, small a. And it means that it's receiving one copy of each from the parents. So it has to receive one copy of this recessive allele from the father, which is individual F. So it can only be heterozygous. Okay, so this is, um, I feel like inheritance is just kind of like a, like infer, slowly, slowly, it's like puzzle. 
you solve this part, you solve this part, then you slowly, slowly solve like to that final one, something like that, right? So uh, you, can, you can see my thought process just now. Yeah, you can use Panel Square. Yeah. Paper one. E, paper two also can use Panel Square. If you, if you don't want to draw this, it's okay. But line is faster, right, than compared to table. I think line is a bit faster. Um, genetic diagram the probability of the fourth kid individual F and individual G to be a normal finger male child okay so F we already say already, it is the NN a big uh, heterozygous and then normal finger G confirm is all homozygous recessive so Actually, this is quite straightforward. Uh. This, is just, this is just a normal genetic diagram, nothing challenging. I suggest you to go try the CS bio that, that genetic, uh, genetic diagram. I thought that question is a bit challenging. So can go and try, even though it's combined bio, but, but you know a lot of learning outcome is overlapping, right? So if you ever feel like it, uh, also go try. The answer is also posted. Um, so this is quite normal. I think the only thing I want to highlight is this, is because the question asks for normal finger, male child. So the probability of getting a normal finger, uh, getting, birthing a normal finger uh, child is half, uh, 50%. But because it's asking for male child, you have to times another half. Because the probability of getting a male child is also half. So it is 25% or 1 over 4. Okay, eight, nine, eight, and question eight and question nine is one of the questions. Uh, these three questions have the most number of people uh, saying that it's, they want a bit more explanation. So I will uh, try to uh, talk about this. 8A, when administering antibiotic, doctor and pharmacies will instruct patients to finish the entire course of treatment, even if you're feeling better. Some bacteria have evolved to be resistant to antibiotic. Uh, all this this paragraph just right just put there for for fun because basically they're asking you to explain what how some bacteria evolved to become resistant. So this is actually a copy of the twenty nineteen uh twenty nineteen I think twenty nineteen paper two question your TYS twenty nineteen question. I think it is something like uh explain how some trees evolved to become fire resistant. Basically, you see this kind of this type of question, it can be applied to every single thing. Uh, like uh, how explain how um, some animal evolved to become this color or become have longer legs, giraffe become longer necks. There are many, many this question can be basically used on anything, right? So I just put this part. But the, but the question, the answer is always the same. Certain words we have to change to answer to the question, right? Answering to the question is very, very important. If not, you, you, are, you are not supposed to just vomit out whatever you know and just write it up. Uh, you have to answer to the question. But the beautiful thing here is that they can't test you that something that's super out of the world. It has to be something you study, something you know. Um, the angle, the perspective could be very, uh, very weird, very unconventional. Okay, but. Uh, you can, but the keywords are always the same. So here it is basically in your inheritance chapter. Well, I can't really remember. Where is natural selection? Which chapter is it? Do you remember? I cannot really remember because that part, is it molecular genetic? Okay, basically this whole, yeah, yeah, it's in, the, uh, it's in that chapter. Um, so the, the keywords are always the same variation within population, the first part variation, and then there is limited resources resulting in competition. And then, uh, so when there's variation, there will be different type, right? One is bacteria that is resistant, one is bacteria that is not resistant. So in this competition, limited resources to survive, right? The resistant bacteria will definitely be better adapted to the environment. Because if let's say we eat 
antibiotic, then those that are not resistant, then they will just die. Right? They, cannot, they cannot survive. But those are resistant, they're better adapted, they can survive, they reproduce and pass down their favorable allele to their offspring. So this allele is the allele that make them resistant to antibiotic. Um, and then, yeah, so their offspring increase in proportion, uh, population, uh, in population, that's the proportion of favorable, favorable allele also increases. And this process is called natural selection or your survival of fetus. Of course, natural selection is the keyword here. Like this whole process is basically natural selection. Um, so some, so some questions they depends on what the questions are, right? You do have to kind of come out with the selection pressure. But in this case, the selection pressure is being given, which is the antibiotic. Some cases, uh, let's say giraffe neck becoming longer. Um, the selection pressure is basically food. The, the trees are very tall. So if you are if you have longer neck, you can easily get the leaf. And your 2019 paper, the TYS, try that you try. Okay, you will try. I won't tell you what's the selection pressure in that question. Own self come out with like answer. Um, and then basically evolve. So you have to address the evolution part. Is that evolution is the change in allele frequency. And over a long period of time, really, really long period of time, it produced major changes in allele frequency so that it can give rise to a new species. Natural selection and uh, evolution. Okay, let's can please send that question again when we talk about uh when we go and go to QA, okay? Because I kind of want to move on with this question. We still have like three questions to cover. Yeah, so these are actually. Um, those who bought the curator notes is really like the whole chunk in curator notes just have to apply to a uh, different question. So I'm sure like it's in like same thing. Apply that whole chunk. It cannot test you anything that's out of the world, that's out of your syllabus. Just have to apply it um, to the what the question is asking for. Biotechnology, name example, biotechnology has helped mankind to improve the quality of crops, that's increase fruit, improve uh, food production. So in this case, um, someone mentioned a very good point is that because it's name example, you do have to talk about a, ne uh, a name example. So here I give a, a, a lot of uh, example. Resistant to pests and herbicide, resistant to drought, resistant to flood, um, enhanced nutrition, all these things. Um, so for this case, you can just like, you can write anything, right? The crops, it can be like um, your rice, your wheat, uh, W H E A T. Uh, this kind of plants that uh that is getting all this uh, technology, basically any crops, right? And it's needed for like food production. Yeah, because it's about food production. Um, same thing is also the same concept about how all your keywords restriction enzyme, um, plasmid, E. coli, DNA ligase heat shock, electric shock, recombinant plasmid, right? In fact, plant cell. So all this, um, for those who have uh, curated notes, it's also just there, like really the whole chunk as well. So the, um, the good and bad thing about like your, like your section, uh, your section B is that if you memorize, right, it's really just the whole chunk there because they usually is like six mark, four mark, five mark, five mark. And it's not your, like your section A, like one mark, two mark, one mark, two mark, um, one mark, two mark thing. Yeah, it's just the whole chunk there. Question nine. Question nine. A lot of people say either. Quite a lot of people also mention they need help in this. But this question should be actually, let me see question 10. I can't remember. Yeah, I think question nine, the either is, the uh, supposedly like you really just memorize and then the whole chunk is like you just put the whole chunk in, right? The role of amniotic fluid and umbilical cord. This one really very straightforward, right? It's just like the different functions of amniotic fluid, the different function of umbilical cord. So here, uh, what I really want to ask you guys is that you don't really need to get your content uh, right. Don't be too, I know a lot of students are very eager to like, oh, I need to practice, I need to do all the prelim paper, right? But before that, 
really is very, very important that uh, you get your content right and memorize everything. Bio is not only about memorization, but memorization is necessary. Okay. Uh, so I wouldn't go through this question because it's all in the notes. And you can also just look at this list. Okay, compare an insect pollinated, oh, insect pollinated and wind pollinated flower. Okay, so here got a, a bit more points and then describe the disadvantage of cross pollination. So this is a two part question. I do like to set two parts question. Um, so first part you compare and then second is to describe the disadvantages. So the compare, there's a lot of things you can compare. I, I, I was lazy, so I just kind of listed it out because it's also in the notes. The petals is like, one is like uh, colorful, big, and some is like small, dull, flowered. Uh, the sand, the nectar, nectar guide. So nectar and nectar guide is absent in being pollinated flower. The stamen structure, these two is very important um, because sometimes it can come out in like labeling as well, right? Or like in MCQ, they ask you like which one is wind pollinated, which one is flower pollinated. They give you two pictures of the flower. They ask you which one. So from the stamen and the stigma, it's very, uh, it's like more obvious. So for the stigma, for the insect pollinated one, it's your typical one. Very small, very compact, right? Look something like, 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 like this. But for your wind pollinated, the stigma will be large and feathery. Um, for the stamen, which is the anther, the um, insect pollinated flower also don't need to be like super big, extend out. The filament don't have to ex extend out of the flower because the insect will come into the flower and then get the pollen and then fly to another flower to pollinate. But then uh, for wind pollinated, it will extend out so that it can come into contact with the wind and then carry the anther. It's advantages also in the notes. Um, basically, all these disadvantages, how like there's two parent plant required, right? Uh, which means that it will be a bit slower because you need to actually find, like you need to rely on the wind and insect to transfer your pollen to another flower. And then external agent of pollination required wind insect. And then because of that, you have to produce a lot of pollen grains because it is like, it's a chance, like 10%, 20% chance. So you need to produce more so that you can actually increase your chance of spreading your pollen grain, receiving pollen grain. Uh, a lot of energy will also be channeled to making this large amount of pollen grain. So these are like some disadvantages. It's also all in the notes. Yeah, so this question, either or question, if you memorize it well, I think either is easier. Like, because it's really just memorizing. Like, it's exactly the title of the notes, the role of amplical called the role of amniotic set. Um, but for question nine, it's a bit, uh, a bit like, uh, it's also not say it's challenging, but it's a bit more uh, asked in a different manner. So first part asked to describe the fate of glucose that was digested um, in a small intestine. Um, just digested. Oh. Digested in the small intestine. Then where would it go? Where would it? Uh, what would happen to it? Right. So of course it will be absorption first. Glucose absorbed by villi enter the blood capillaries, and it can be by diffusion or active transport. Right. So this is after digestion already from your small intestine. It will be absorbed. Then after absorbed, what will happen? It will be transported to the liver by hepatic portal vein. Excess glucose converted to glycogen in the liver, and then if it's not the excess glucose, it's the essential glucose, it will be used for respiration. Yeah, so in, actually, if even though the angle is a bit weird, but um, it's also a very straightforward answer, but the question may be a little bit more trickier. Yeah. Um, B, describe the route taken um, by a molecule of carbon dioxide after it's released. Yeah, so this, I, I love this question because it, and it reinforced the idea that bio is linked. All your bio chapters are linked. It, it cannot be studied like one single chapter like that. Uh, if you are studying like, oh, this chapter is this chapter, this chapter is this chapter, then it's not a correct way of studying bio, right? Every chapter is linked in some way. So carbon dioxide, oh, I keep, carbon dioxide released by the respiring tissue in the kidney 
and then expel out of the body. Okay, so this one is very complicated. It has carbon dioxide, then it's just released by the kidney after res respiration, and then it's expelled to the body. So here, carbon dioxide, it has to be the vein. So what are the veins that's leaving the kidney? Renal vein to the vena cava. And then back to the heart, right atrium, right ventricle, pulmonary artery, then to the lung, right? So here is like your heart. Vena cava. And before vena cava, you have to talk, it very specifically tell you it's the kidney, right? So you have to know three, uh, three special artery and vein, right? Your hepatic one, which is your liver, your renal, which is your um, kidney, and then also like your pulmonary one, uh, which is to the lung, right? So these are like, there are many, many, uh, many, many veins and artery, but that's what you need to know for your syllabus. Um, you don't have to mention carbonic and hydrates because the question is asking for the route taken. So it's just like the route, but rather like not how it is being removed or like the mechanism is being transported. Okay. Um, so we know, we know being very important, definitely one important point. And then this part is just like back to the heart. So the heart movement. And then after that, it would diffuse from the blood capillaries into the alveoli, bronchial, bronchi, trachea, larynx, pharynx, nostril, how it's being exported out of the body. All right, that is the end. Okay, uh, let me just quickly go back to my keynote. Let me continue with this. Then we're going to Q&A, okay? Oh, sorry, I didn't give you guys a break, but uh, we don't have a lot of time. Okay, so, okay, let me drink water, then you all breathe a bit. Okay. Um, moving towards O level, um, as I said, if you are someone who like confident with your content, then of course you try your paper. And then, uh, if you are not yet, uh, you do have to get your content right in terms of understanding and memorization. So usually, if you can understand, then memorization shouldn't be too difficult. Also, but of course, I understand that there's a lot to memorize, right? Um. Before you attempt all the prelim paper and TYS, so really, really try to uh, try to memorize your stuff, get your content right. And this process, right, like getting your content right and then moving to practice paper, this is not like one single line. Doesn't mean like, oh, okay, I think I get my content right already. Then I will just do prelim paper. But the fact that, why do you practice? You practice to find out what you have problems with. Then you have to go back to your content like, hmm, do did I, did I understand this correctly? Do I memorize this correctly? Are my keywords uh, missing? Because bio is all about keywords, right? So it's a set and a set, a set of keywords. So when you're doing practice paper, then you're like, huh, this question got right this keyword that I don't usually write. Then you have to start thinking like, um, is it important? Is it necessary? Am I missing out? Or does this question, is this question special that it requires this keyword? So this is like to my point where when you look at my model answer, you'll be like, I don't really agree with this. Um, it's your discretion, right? It has to be, some, it cannot be everything you must, you ask. Sometimes we also don't know the answer because we don't know how the Cambridge marker will mark. So it's up to your discretion. Um, and, but certain questions very obvious. Some keywords is just unavoidable. If you miss it out, maybe you are just not familiar enough. Yeah. So this is what uh, can do working towards O level. Like I really appreciate like all of you like who are here, right? On Thursday night, no one, no one asks you like you must be here, which means that you really want to um, practice and really want to learn. Um, the, oh, I just wanted to use this effect, removal of CLT. Um, ecology has been in the past five years, the largest percentage of all the chapter. Um, really, if you go and flip your TYS, right? It will have at least two questions from that, that chapter. So the impact of removing this chapter is great. You all memorize less, but 
it also means that every other chapter become more important, right? Where does this 17% go to? This 17% will go to every other chapter. Uh, not Maybe not all, but means that some chapter will get it like weightage. Yeah, so um, not much in important advice, right? Because we are, uh, we are not spotting any questions here. You are, you are better go and study every single chapter. Um, yeah, so just know that um, if we move this, then every other chapter with this will increase. Uh, okay, so soft plug here, the crash course. Sorry, I just, if you all attended a few, you'll know that this is like typical template, right? I just have to follow through. Um, the crash courses are designed to help you to get a like comprehensive and in-depth uh, revision. So uh, for those who have attended, you all will know that it's four hours and these four hours, we, 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 we go through every single chapter and then some we sprinkle a lot of tips, a lot of uh, exam techniques. Yeah, and it's at Yishun, it's somewhere near Yishun. Um, the 0% the is because it's paper two. Yeah. And then, yeah, so for bio, uh, I bolded this part because it's 25th September. Um, actually, the slots are running out, it's pretty filled, but um, yeah, so if you're interested, you, should, uh, you can sign up, then we'll see each other in real life. But of course, there's also other chapters like your math, your chem, physics, English, and combined humans. Okay? Yes. Uh, oh, if you don't want to attend, but you want like a very a set of, like it's called curated notes for a reason. We really put it in like very concise, very direct manner. Um, it's like you can copy paste to answer your question and then tweak it to answer to the question. But the keywords are like all there. So Twitter notes is a pretty good um, investment as well. And all this can be found on the Overmark website. Okay, enough of this promotion. Keep the question coming. I cannot stay for too long, but uh, okay, I see, um, but just post a question. I'll try my best to answer. Question six of MCQ. Question six of MCQ is about energy. The fats. The fats. Okay, so water, carbohydrate, protein, and fats. So these are the four biological molecules here. And re uh, it results in which one contains fat. Fat has the most amount of energy. Energy, calories, it, it's like translate both are like, same thing. So one gram of fats has nine calories. Carbohydrate and protein has four. So, which means that energy, uh, fat store the largest amount of energy, so it will lead to a highest uh, temperature change. Um, okay. Um, throughout your student life, what do you think is the best way to revise for bio? Yeah. Um, there's many ways to revise bio, right? Uh, I think everyone really has very different methods. Uh, you have to find the method that works for you. Um, for me, to me, I find understanding the understanding it is the most basic of basic. Like I really strive to understand everything that I'll memorize. Um, I know some people don't like that. Some people like to like acronyms and things like that, like uh, short form, but I don't really do that. I just understand. And one thing that I do is very, not everyone does that, is that I like to copy down. I like to write like three times, copy down three times. To me, it's one way like when I'm copying, I memorize. Another thing is like muscle memory. When you write it down, um, like my answer, right? Like for example, if I were to answer a enzyme substrate, uh, like a enzyme question, right? My answer will always be the same because that is the set that I remember like that. Relationship of ovum and ovule with seed. Okay, so the ovule is what will become the seed, and then the ovary is what will become the fruit. Ovum is the egg cell in human. Is there a good way to memorize cell division? Mm, similar, you have to really find your way for yourself. For me, I draw out. Like, I think if I, I can actually draw like one cell from the prophase, metaphase, anaphase to kilophase. And one cell from the uh, meiosis 1, meiosis 2. That is how I learn and how I kind of memorize. Online notes and curated notes. So curated notes is uh there is more 
there's more content. Online notes is very basic, um, but not saying that the online notes are not good, right? We also put in a lot of effort into the online notes. The curated notes is like a booklet. Let me show you. Um, the curator notes look like this. Oh, I have this. Ugh, I have to use my body like that. Then it is in like a lot uh, less diagram, more words, and a lot more like I guess instead of explanation, it's more like all the content, like the most concise, like what you should memorize kind of thing. Yeah. Question is in MCQ. Question 18, just now as I explained, so the action X and Y should be quite straightforward, right? It is just like you, you get the CO2 from the respiring tissue. So uh, but you want to transport it to the lung. So you would form this. So this has to be, X has to be the respiring tissue and then Y has to be lung because Y you want to reform the CO2 to expel it. So probably the question here is the homeostatic function. The homeostatic function here is the CO2 and O2 balance because it's about the CO2, not about its acid and base. How do we tell the difference between... Mm, this is a good question. Uh, natural selection and evolution, they are a bit different. Natural selection is about choosing who, the individual that is the best adapted to environment. So let's say we got a tree that's 10 meters tall. Um, there's one giraffe that is 10 meter and one giraffe that is 8 meter. The, eight, the natural selection will select the giraffe that is 10 meter, has a, a 10 meter tall. And natural selection will, uh, the 8 meter tall giraffe is disadvantaged in this natural selection. So it select the individual that is the most advantageous. Evolution is a longer term thing. Evolution is like many, many years. Like it's a repeated natural selection, then it will cause this evolution, or the giraffe will become 10 meter tall. No more 8 meter tall giraffe. Okay, can understand that um that distinction. 7, 15, 19. Um, 7, it is the enzyme substrate. So substrate product enzyme. And this is both the substrate and enzyme are, it, uh, can be denatured at high temperature. So it has to be the protein. So in this case, the enzyme is the protease. Okay. Um, so, okay. Um, for question 15, ring of muscle at the origin of a blood capillary, which statement? So this, Blood capillary network, right? So you have to kind of imagine that picture, like it looks something like this, right? Probably you, you have seen something like A. Yeah, so this is your skin surface. And this is your capillaries. And there's a ring of muscle at the origin of blood capillaries, which means that it's somewhere here. So when... Okay, so uh, this... When it, the what statement is true about this question, uh, this ring of muscle. So in this in this ring of muscle, if it constrict, what will happen? The blood flows like this. So if it constrict, means that less blow, less less blood flows to the blood capillary. So this is definitely wrong. And then it will not affect the blood pressure. Cannot be right because it affects the blood flow. So it will affect the blood pressure when it dilate. Um, it can cause the skin to turn redder. Yes, because more blood flows through and then your skin will turn redder. Basically, like when you're hot, you know when how like when, when the weather is very hot, your skin will turn red also. Because uh, you're hot, the ring of muscle will dilate so that more blood will flow through the blood capillaries and more heat can be lost through that. Okay, so yes, when dilated, the skin can turn redder. Question 19, um, the, uh, the seals are marine mammals. When they dive underwater, they're capable of respiring anaerobically for a long period of time. And during this time, 
uh, the blood flow to the muscle is greatly reduced, but the muscle are able to uh, tolerate high concentration of lactic acid. Okay. Um, so they are asking. So this is the this this is showing like the change in the con uh, the concentration in blood, um, and they are asking why explain the changes in the lactic acid concentration during time X. So lactic acid what happened during time X? It spike up, right? So why does uh why does lactic acid spike up? Because lactic acid production increase. Why does lactic acid production increase? Because the oxygen decrease. So this period is your anaerobic respiration. That's why lactic acid uh, is. That's why lactic acid increase. Yeah. So this period is your anaerobic respiration. Anaerobic. Limiting factor. Yes. Um, limiting factor. Let's go back to the notes. Question two. Hmm. Okay. What are the limiting factors? So the definition of limiting factor is that when that factor increases, the rate of reaction increases. So in this graph, let's look at this graph. Okay. This part. Okay, I'm gonna write down limiting factor. Factor increase. Rate of reaction increase. So this is what limit, limiting factor means. So this part of the graph, part one, what is the limiting factor? It is carbon dioxide concentration. Because when carbon dioxide concentration increase, the rate of reaction increase. At this part, what is the rate? Uh, what is the limiting factor? It is not carbon dioxide. Because when carbon dioxide increase, it didn't increase. It stays, uh, it stays the same. Okay. So, uh, and what factor could be? Um, it could be light and temperature. Just because um, that is what we. These are the three factors that we know. What is the uh, limiting factor to photosynthesis? Okay. So limiting factor. Just remember this. When the factor increase, the rate of reaction have to increase. So look at the x-axis, look at the y-axis. Okay. All right, any other question? Seems I don't have, but I give you all a, a while more to if you all want to ask anything. Mm. So the question is that it's important to study bio um, by linking chapter together. Would you recommend that? Uh, would you recommend creating a mind map or doing more questions? I feel like um sometimes doing mind map is definitely a great idea, right? If you have time, uh, I think if you are at like your usual like, let's say you are at a uh, okay, it's a very arbitrary thing. Let's say uh, you are you you are quite good with your content, like uh not bad really, um, then of course you can spend some time to create the mind map. It will help you to see the big picture and it will help you to memorize stuff. Um, and sometimes the link of the chapter right, will come to you when you do more questions. When you're attempting a question, you're like, hey, this question seems to be testing like more than just one chapter. So that is when you can add to your mind map um, that kind of idea. Yeah, so both. To be... Yeah, just not already kind of explained to me is that every time when you see the word with reference to the graph, right? Just make sure you need to quote data. Okay. Um, and then um explain the term limiting factor. Then you have to talk about how limiting factor that like I said just now. Lah. Factor increase, real reaction increase. This is basically what you have to uh have to put in the idea here, which is that right, increasing CO2 concentration increases the rate of uptake. But at some point, the rate of photosynthesis remains the same, so it's no longer a limiting factor. Yeah, so this kind of question is like, you have to understand limiting factor well. To be able to explain it, then use the graph. 
um, question five of MC2. Question five. Oh, question five is denaturation. This is denaturation because it changed in shape. So it has to be denaturation is either temperature or pH. So it's either one. Okay. Um yeah. So question seven P2. Oh, okay. So it has to start from zero zero because what was the question asking? It's the rate of the re rate rea uh, reaction one, right? The delay in reaction, increase in reaction time one, right? Yeah, so um, the best fit line, we start from zero, and then, uh, but we don't extrapolate beyond. The cell division one, give me some time. That, that is, cell division is a lot. So let me address that. Last minute advice, hang in there. I don't know, depends on whether... If you are if you are still struggling with content, okay, it's never too late. There's there, uh, there'll always still be time, right? So do not give up. Doesn't matter at what point of progress you are at, do not give up. But pace yourself. Don't over like tire out yourself. Okay, I go through question thirty nine. I will go through cell division. Then I will end this. Okay, so uh, I cannot take more question anymore. So I'll go to 39 and then I'll talk about a bit about cell division. So if you want to like just get a big idea or like just revise your cell, cell division, you can stay on a bit longer. Mm. Okay. For question 39, natural selection can lead to better adapting um, so species surviving. So just now as I mentioned, natural selection is um, selecting the a uh, better adapted one, right? The eight meter tall and ten meter tall giraffe. So it's true. Natural selection can lead to an extinction of a species. It is also true because between that ten meter tall giraffe and eight meter tall giraffe, eight meter tall giraffe will be not be selected for. It will be selected against, which means that natural selection will think that it's not good enough. It's not fit enough to survive in this environment where all the trees are ten meter tall. So it is also true. And natural selection can lead to gene mutation occurring. It is wrong. The idea is natural selection requires variation. Right? The variation. It has to, it has to have variation. If everyone is 10, if all giraffe is 10 meters tall, then um then it wouldn't it wouldn't be natural selection. If all, all giraffe is 10 meters tall, then we can't, we, we, uh, there's no natural selection because all giraffe is the same. So variation is important for natural selection. What contributes to variation is genetic mutation. One of the methods of contributing to variation is genetic mutation. So uh, the third column is wrong. So the answer is B, 39B. Okay, okay cell division. Let's see. Hmm. Let's just look at this one. Mitosis. Uh, just learn to how to draw, learn how to draw it out, right? I can't really go through everything here, but the idea is that, let's say if it is this cell, this is two chromosome. After mitosis, it still have to be two chromosome. Okay, but the difference here is that this will line up like that, like that. And then it will split half. So it will become like that. So it's still two chromosome, right? It's just, we look at the central meal. Yeah. 
so maybe what would help in cell division is knowing what what is your um what is the starting chromosome number what is the end chromosome number at least yeah just um maybe what will help is really go and learn how to draw it out like it will really help you to understand how it speak how it move and then at each stage what is the number of chromosome yeah so in this case it start with two chromosome it will also end with two chromosome because mitosis same number of chromosome but meiosis um let's say it start with two chromosome right here you can see here it start with two chromosome right it will split into it will split to like that it will split half so by by meiosis one it is only left with one chromosome then what is meiosis two doing is that meiosis is splitting this up so it becomes still one chromosome one chromosome one chromosome one chromosome it is kind of like understanding the big picture so it would help you to maybe um i think usually if you if if we start at the understanding part then um maybe the key thing is like just have to try to understand and then the understanding part can maybe you look at video look at like some pictures that help with the big picture i hope that would help lah. yeah so you can also use these notes these are like the big picture idea that um then occurring in both the mitosis and meiosis some alcohol in the body no let's just look at this question again This one right reaction time um i think okay the, the i think the here is that when there is an increase in alcohol level then the reaction time will increase more like the increase in alcohol level no alcohol won't there still increase in reaction time Yeah, maybe I will change the y-axis to be more clear, to be increased in reaction time. Yeah, so this is not really like reaction time, but like the increase in reaction time. So the baseline is that uh, like normal reaction time, but because you drink alcohol, then there'll be some increase. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you everyone for staying. Thanks 30 of you who stay through this thing. Uh, all the best. And Sayo for O level hang there.